Rusty Ricker with the New England Fools, uh, training organization, uh, fraternal organization based out of Massachusetts. We have uh, over 100 members from all six New England states. Fire training, hazmat training, right. EMS training, technical yep, rescue like training, you. and the, the requirements are almost Thank getting you guys. overwhelming. Part, part of the problem is, one, you go to a career department, you're going to get paid, you're going to get benefits, you're going to be scheduled. It's, incredible, it's getting incredibly harder to recruit call firefighters. I've been called firefighter for many, many, many years. Um, it's hard because of the training requirements that are expected. And you're telling your family, oh, we can't go away this weekend because there's nobody else to cover the town. They can't anymore. And in more and more places, they, they don't, people don't work in the same towns where they live. Where they live. So, you look at here, that, and nowadays employers can't afford to let people go. Away. Shortly after the events of March, I had reached out to the chief uh, saying we wanted to do something for them, and what we wanted to do was what we do best, and that was to train firefighters. In memory of not only in memory of Joel, in honor of Joel, we um, are doing it in memory and of honor of a friend of ours who was killed in a car accident in late 2017. He was a very um, important member of our organization as well as of our instructor cadre, so doing it in their honor. And obviously for, you know, being a memorial for, uh, for Joel, everybody jumped right on it. Uh, it's very important to the firefighters and the fire service. Uh, it's very seldom we get an opportunity like this through the New England fools that come up and really get into the, the heart of the, the training process. We do training, but nothing to this extent. Right. So overall, it's, uh, it's uh, really welcoming, welcoming them, <laughs> uh, excuse me. Um, and I appreciate what the, the fools have done and in memory of Joel. And uh, hopefully we're gonna be able to continue this training uh, to this degree throughout the next coming years. So we have eight groups of approximately six firefighters and they're just rotating around to the different stations over the course of today and tomorrow. So each firefighter this year for both days will have done all eight stations by the time tomorrow afternoon comes. Um, we have a ladders evolution. Look at you! Now, in reverse, we're going in, doesn't matter what carry. I'm going to try to position myself here about four to six feet away from the wall. We come in, we transition, and I start hopping. It gets there, damn near a perfect angle. Uh, by doing it with the high shoulder carry technique, we can just have it on our shoulder punch the bottom of the bottom uh, beam into the ground and just push it up one full swoop. You also avoid any potential obstacles on the way in. Whether you're, if you're carrying it in the suitcase, that's great. It's easy. It's, it's, it's not heavy. If you're stacking your joints, everything stays where it belongs. You get it up here, you avoid the potential car at the driveway or the, the fence that you have to get over or the bushes you have to get over. It's already up here. So to do this from the ground to your shoulder, think. everyone know where the balance points are on their ladders? I'm pretty good right here, right? This is where I want to be. If I go anywhere beyond this, I'm going to start pivoting my ladder. So I'm going to take this from the ground. I'm basically going to do a power clean. Anyone that's ever worked out, a power clean. I'm going to keep my back straight. I'm not bending over. I'm not, I'm not struggling with this thing. I'm going to hold it like I'm two, holding two, two coffee cups or two beer signs, right? I'm going to take this. As I come up, I'm going to pop my hips. And I'm going to flip this onto my shoulder. I'm Just going like in. that. So when I get to the wall, all I have to do is dig that in, if I'm doing this by myself. A little clean. Find your balance point. But try Looks it, pretty good. No, try it your way and then try it the way you should. Yeah. Or vice versa. So then, yeah. and you right just up, flip right up and on your shoulder. One more. You got it halfway. Yep. You put so it up on your shoulder and turn into it. So flip Triple that hip. So, so from here, you're just going to flip up on your shoulder. Let the, let the momentum take Okay. Since 1973, I've been in a truck. 
day, night, it doesn't matter. It reflects, you'll know where that balance point is. It becomes standard. If you have one of these smaller people, you know, smaller guys or, or, or smaller females, or someone who can't do that shoulder carry, there's nothing wrong with that. There are other ways to, you know, we talked a thousand ways to skin a cat, right? Load your tools. This, you make it a modified you, you know, a sled, right? Again, the manufacturer's not going to want you to do this because that's not what these are designed for. I'm going to walk around the whole building with all my tools. And depending on where I put them on the ladder, I'm not feeling anything because that inclined plane still, still, still exists. You might have, uh, you know, you're going to the rear of the building and there's two of you, there's three of you. Um, we might have a 35. We would set the hooks, or a 24. We would set the hooks, put the upper ladder into this one so it's holding it. Maybe I go back, I have my saw, I have my, my irons and whatever else, and I'll scoot to the back, or I can get Joe. Joe takes one side, I take the other, we're going back. Right now, we're just, we're just advancing the tool conveniently after the climb. It's a very, very strong and simple way of doing this. And both tools, you'll notice that the, the New York style hook on the 45 degree angle side is the one you lead with. That grips the rung the best way. That thing's not going to, even if you bounce climb the ladder, it's not going to pop out. We have a residential search evolution. Talk to each other. All right. Looks like I got a table or something right here. Nothing's on the island. Get low, get low, get low. You're good here, you're good here, Okay, I can hear you. So one of the things they're doing is trying to cover as much area as possible during one of their searches. Uh, particularly with smaller towns, short staffed companies, etc. We don't can't throw as many people at a fire as a big city of Boston, Manchester, or uh, Hartford, Worcester can. So we have to try to make up for that by different search techniques. So we're trying to find a way to spread out these tools to their advantage. You see right now, the lieutenant, he's covered that entire area. This individual is working on the left side. Now they're going to keep pursuing on down through. Come on, guys. Move, 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 move. Talk to each other, gentlemen. You're quiet. Okay, head towards him. You know you've got this area searched. Which space so they should be head first towards the door. If they're head first deeper into the building, that means they were heading back in for something valuable, possibly a child. So that's one of the things we try to keep. So they just found a secondary, they found a baby along with it. Yes, sir, the command. Answering. Second victim found same location as the first. Okay, on the message. All right, guys. Outstanding. We have a rotary saw evolution, uh, forcing entry with rotary saws with cutting state burglar bars or, or security doors or garage doors. that you're a little close to the blade. Make sure that you always make sure that you're keeping your fingers away from the blade, something like that. And especially here when you're cutting up here, uh, we can usually get if you got the bars side by side, most of these blades you can usually knock out two bars at a time. Get in, get yourself in a position. We might have to take the ladder and start at one side and move across. Again, we're not breaking the window yet. They might have already broken the window inside, but if we've got smoke coming out, we want to start making the cuts. We want to start Try to go away from the smoke if we have to, you know, uh, before anything is broke. So the downwind side, keep that in mind also with that. We don't want to have the smoke in our face. Uh, and usually, if you're going to practice this, these are very easy to make. This is one of the easiest props to build. This is set up for dual stations. We've got two sets of people cutting at the same time. But you can go back to the firehouse, take some scrap 2x4, just 
take a picture of it later, make a prop. Rebar is pretty inexpensive. You can find it. There's, if you look around, there's enough of it laying on the ground here. It'll probably keep you busy for a few weeks. Uh, plus on the strap you have here. But it gives you a good experience of getting some stuff cut. Garage door is a little harder to come by. Because the wood has to allow ground through this a couple dozen times, a couple dozen flashes, and the woods can fall apart. So, but. Any other questions on everything we've gone over today? It's a very versatile tool. And like Tommy said, it will eat you up if you do not respect it and you don't practice with it and get comfortable. If, get comfortable with not complacent. It's a, it's a six foot wedding. You can keep in your pocket the glove however you choose to do it. Okay, it's very simple. Run the handle, okay? This is a smaller saw, so we'll have to make maybe a couple wraps. Go around the back part of this cage, come back up. Comb it off. Move the saw to the back. Okay. Right down the mid-range of your line, okay? Feel comfortable? A little awkward, but yeah, lean left. Lean right. Going anywhere? Nope. Put your two hands up in the air. He's still got full use of his hands. Okay, he can go up a ground ladder, go up a stick. Okay, still take that tool with him and not be an inconvenience or something that may, may make him use, lose his stability. Okay, that's as simple as that. Pretty simple, right? He usually has this thing in the middle. Okay. That little handle in the middle is going horizontal. Is the door open or closed? What is it locked or unlocked? I should say. Locked, locked, locked. But going like this? Okay. Some other ones are different. Not all the same. How do you know for sure what it is? Try. It's no different than the, the typical force of electric tip. Try before you pry. Okay? We have a regular conventional forcible entry um, evolution going on. Where's the, uh, we didn't come off the rig with the tools. Can't find them out. You're, you're doing what? I'm the Danny boy. I'm the kid. for the tools. Action. Yeah, man. Yeah. Three seconds. Hold on. Got enough. Drop down into the uh, solo way there. Good? Right here. Right here's the hole right here. We're going to drop down right here. Wait a second. Hold on. Alright, can we try it? No. Okay. Wait, alright. Get over here on my, uh, on the top. Yeah, I'm yeah, probably going to need to because. Uh, hold on a sec. Remember, you got one. Guide yep. him in. All right, yeah. put your hand. There you go. Raise your hand. Right there, you got it. Yeah. They got it right there, all right? You lost a wedge. Ah, fuck the wedge. Give me the, uh, Just... give me some hits. Yeah, where you at? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get position. Come down a little bit. No, 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 the axe man. Axe man. Yeah, the Halligan you were going to or the axe man was just hitting a little bit high. There you go. Hit it in. I think you're good right there. Yep. I go up behind. Go up. Yeah, up, up and out at yes. the same time. Okay. So you're gonna spread that. We need your help with this one. Come here. You still have to call. Call at the same time or it's worthless. Okay, right? On three. We're going to go up and out, okay? Yeah. All right, ready? One, two, three. Hold on. All right. Yannick, do you have the nail again? Yeah. Can you buy your real estate with a wedge? Yeah. Can you capture that? On the wedge? Yeah. All right, you got one? Yeah. Who's got one at your head? With the end, you know what I'm saying? Alright, I'm going up, hold on. 
Hey. All right, we're good. Pull it. You got the door. Pull it. Yeah, I had to do it. All right, let's take off. Any new operations where you work by yourself, you might be doing a search. All right, we got another door. But most of the time, you're physically All right, yeah, hold on a second. All right, we lost it, but I got it captured, so. All right, feel. I want you to feel first with your hand where the edge is. All right, you got it? Yeah. 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 All right, let, let, let the tool come out. I got the lead. Good. All right, give me some space so I can get up. There you go. We got it. Good job, guys. Nice work. We have a roof operation going up on the roof for um, ventilation of peak roofs and a flat roof. The guy knows when he hits the hits the hook or something. You know, you're within two or three foot of the edge of the roof and everything. Dragging it along with, yes, he's making a cut. Keeps your eyes moving around, you can have a hand on them and actually push them with this as he gets a little bit too close to the edge of the roof. Staying low, balance of gravity, we're on a roof, we're working, got air packs on. Put a knee on the saw, gets us lower to the ground, lower to the roof. And now when I go to start it, I'm only pulling right to here. Making our cuts, use the feet of the saw here to your advantage. Drag it along that. Full RPMs, high it up, plunge in, and start your cut just by dragging it along with the feet. I can hold it fast like this but that doesn't always do me good. But my here near an edge or something, I can't hold it like that. I gotta be able to spin this saw around and operate it in both directions. So I wanna be just as comfortable holding the saw like this as I am like this, or whichever way we're set. So today, all we're gonna do real quick, you're gonna start here, plunge it in, cut across, get to this point, spin the saw, opposite hand, come back. What do they got going on? I don't know, is that a car? I think it's the construction workers. Maybe. I've been hearing nail guns going off. right towards your feet, okay? You want the saw out in front of you. 
once you get vertical with that saw, it takes nothing off that to kick, kick into your feet, uh, you know, what have you. So you're using the the uh, the foot stop of the of the support, right? Let the lieutenant put down there. Stop your cut for a minute. Okay, it's not a road race. Stop it for a second. Let's drop this down a little bit. Boom, you guys pulls out, swing, you tie it up for like what? Five, ten seconds. Now you're safely finishing that cut up. Okay? Um, what I like to do is either one, one or two, it, uh, it doesn't really matter much. I like this being my third cut. And then the bottom cut, some people do it opposite, but I like it this way because now everything that can give you problems is up here. And you can be down there finishing your last cut. So if that thing drops in, you're not nowhere near it. You're not right over it. Or you're right, not right next to it. Okay? On the ladder, uh, being next to it, depending on how your wind's blowing, could be good, could be bad. Right? So which, which one, which, cut, which cuts do you make first, or which ones do you do? Oh, so, you do. either, okay, him. Well, that would be a third. Yeah. So either first cut. Okay, second. Okay. He could have gone away with doing cut one, cut two, cut three, all the way up there, right? Oh, yeah, if, if this is a, uh, uh, a, a truss roof, yeah. but yes, definitely. Boom, boom, see you later, bye, we're gone. Absolutely. Uh, the other thing is, this, we just, this is just demo stuff, so you're not, you don't have a 4x4 four four that you're striving for. So if you had a 4x4 four four hole, you were going to be at some point, no matter what, some point in that cut, you're going to be incorporating uh, one of the rafters. So now you can take cantilever that, I call it the plug, so that piece you've cut, cantilever like that. Now it's not going in, you don't have to throw it down. If it was something, uh, Russ is going to go running for the ice cream guy. Like so, uh, uh, so, a couple things. One is, if you do have a plug like that, you always want to try and pull that piece down into that hole. It's going to be right where you want to punch out that seal. Right? So just get it out of the way. Uh, so now, you got to make sure. I mean, you got to do a little walking, you get to the edge of that roof to let these guys know that you know, you're dropping this off. You may not have that luxury, you're not be able to do that. You've got chimneys, you've got soil.
bit. Just maybe make a corner. Back up in. Slide up to this side. Feed it around. Go in. Get your first right. Stop. Good. Okay. Now we're going to take that right. So what do you want to do with the backup guy? Take the right. You want to get a little hose past it. So what you want to do is come right here. Get a little bit of hose built up right here. And then we're going to slide down here. We're going to make this corner. Take the corner up. Stand by. Stand by. What I'm going to do? I'm going to pull that. So now this corner will be a little bit easier to stretch. All right. Get up and back. Come up. stretched out we've got nozzle and coupling right at our entry point as this is stretched out you're masking up he gets this stretched he masks up come over charge our line bleed it out we're ready we stretched 200 feet dry right to the point of attack we now have our 100 or 150 we decided to use for our department ready to go into operation right there and now so they're an open port for the next crew to walk in on. I was about a minute and a half, and I was at the pace. It's pretty good. There's no fire, there's no urgency, we're just... My job is struck a box. The Viking corner is my job, struck a box. <laughs> All right, so we have this. Next question we get into, and I will preface by saying this, I stole this from a very, very smart individual who taught me a lot. And I'm stealing it from Jeff. And Jay's stealing it from me. We bleed a line out. How do we bleed a line? In the opposite direction of where you're going to point it. Okay. So if you're going to go in there where they get pointed somewhere where nobody's going to get hit. Okay. What do a lot of people do? Straight to the ground, straight into the building. What happens? I see a line for about four feet. There's a nice big building like this. We're going to win that man door over there. How about I turn sideways in the building and I open it up? Yep. Now I see the full reach of my stream. When we've been flowing, we've gone from that door to just past the tree, shrub, weed, whatever we're going to call that rope that's on the side of the building. We're already throwing water past that. Add 100 feet of hose to that. As far as packing this, this is actually really easy to pack. About 500 bucks, maybe 600. I know we have a gauge of why, just don't think we have a pressure. I know we don't have a pressure. About 160 to 250 bucks, depending on what you buy. They're 
really short. Yeah, I'm sure if we look hard, we'd rather have them sitting around somewhere. We don't even realize All right, with these, nice way to do it, make a nice little single stack. Coat On their website, Coat Check. tall guy so this keeps it about nice and then you strap it together. Uh, my department we're using 150, we're using hundreds here. Find out what works for you guys. Make those up. These are also great for training. Have those the thing tonight. It's for a right cause, for a right reason. Oh, it's a hard job not to love. Yeah. 